Yes, the answer is correct. So let me. Um, so someone answered in the chat. I don't know how to repeat. Uh, yes, two times. Uh, that's right. You compute. What do you do? You compute the, the degree of the ramification and you the branch locus and you and you subtract C for the automorphism group of P1. So, so let me see. So the degree of this is um, what they say, 16, that's correct. And then moduli count is 16 minus three. In any case, it's bigger than 12. So you also have a, a fiber of dimension, one dimension. Okay, so we are now in business. Uh, let's see, let's see yeah, how, yes, yes, please. So the thing is, the, the first thing, okay, uh, for this, uh, when you write, write this uh, exact sequence on, uh, with a normalization, I guess you have a Jacobian of norm normalization. So I assume that if a normalization is uh, disconnected, you just, the, you, you take the product of two, uh, two components. many, many smooth components, yes? So that's just yeah. the first thing. Okay, and the second thing, uh, when you write those uh, four uh, loci, yes, I guess you need to show that the, that the image, uh, uh, that uh, the restricted prim map is still dominant on those things, yes, because they are not generic, yes, uh, in a sense, or in the whole. Yes, case. yes. And so, <laughs> so this is not trivial, I think. No, no, yes. no, no. So first of all, uh, the list itself is not trivial. Actually, the list itself is is, is bigger, but uh, there are some cases we are not considering because uh, they go to a smaller loci, so the smaller dimension. They they don't cover is less than twelve, and as you said, uh, the restriction has to be has to be proper as well. So, but it, it has to be, mm -hmm. yes. So, uh, yes. How, so, how do you compute? So, here's the question: How do you compute the degree? What, so, what does it mean the degree uh, over a fiber which is has positive dimension of the fiber. So you have to blow up. So I, I think it's, it's worth to spend time on, on this lemma because I think it has, uh, yes, let's answer that question. Um, <clears throat> uh, okay. So how to compute the local degree? Okay, let's, let's do a little bit. Um, how to compute a local degree? Mm -hmm. So let's consider um, a proper map. First, you start with a proper map uh, and dominant uh, between same uh, same dimensional varieties, same dimension or uh, yeah, n dimensional varieties, uh, n dimensional varieties. X and, X and Y. So in uh, particular, F is generically finite. So take, take uh, um, an irreducible, irreducible two variety of co-dimension K. And then take the, the inverse of this Variety. So this 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 breaks out uh, in finitely many components. Mm -hmm. Many components. That's uh, it. Set E of different co-dimensions. L i and x. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can compute the local degree of uh, local degree di of f along every component set i yes by by localizing by localizing x at the set e then you compute the local degree of this map so in such a way um so let's say the e the local degree of z along z e so the degree of the map the degree f of f uh, is the sum of all these guys. Okay, 
So I have to do it. Um, okay, let's let's um, let's analyze. Take one of these components. One of these components. Mm -hmm. And then look at the diagram after blowing up. So you blow up um, Z, blow X along Z. Let's call it this X tilde over X, Z. So it has a exceptional divisor, call it Z tilde, that maps to Z, exceptional divisor. And then goes, you have F goes to Y. You have the image here. And you blow up on this side, mm, B of Y, this is the blow up. And let's call it W tilde, the sectional divisor here. So you can, you have a map between the blobs F tilde. Okay. Now, <clears throat> uh, you have an induced map. So that induces a map. Actually, you have an induced map F tilde between the exceptional divisors. And this is the degree you want to compute. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, actually, let's call it in Donagis notations. Yeah, is is F tilde restricted to Z tilde. Mm -hmm. So, but what is this at Z tilde? So uh, uh, from the definition of blow up, Z tilde is the projectivization of the normal bundle, normal bundle of, of unless I don't know what this Z over X. Yeah, this is, this is the, 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 the definition, right? So you have a tangent, a tangent space to X. So in each, yeah, tangent space. Um, so the composing tangent space to Z plus a normal bundle set over X. Okay, <clears throat> okay good. So uh, take a Z, a small Z in Z, W the image, and look at the differential of Z at the point. So this is a map between the tangent, point, the tangent spaces at the point. Mm -hmm. And then these maps, uh, these maps, um, here inside you have a tangent at Z of big Z goes to the tangent at W small W. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this set induces um so you have induces you have a map between the fibers, so actually a map between the normal bonds at the point small z with the normal bundles what w okay so here is the lemma this lemma follows from the universal property of blown ups that uh, this map f tilde is good. so you want to extend this map in such a way that is now regular f tilde is regular at the generic um point in Z tilde, if and only if this map at the level of the normal bundles is not identically zero. Zero and generic Z in Z, okay? Mm -hmm. Ah, well, that's is actually didn't I didn't really need this, but uh, uh, now if, if tilde is regular, I want to actually need more, I want to most precisely. For every Z tilde in the fiber, so the blob in the fiber over, over this small Z, if only if, actually is what I need, this map is injective. on the normal bond, on the normal space. Oops, 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 oops. On the normal space to set. Mm -hmm. 
and say here, uh, where, here, this one. Yeah, I want it to be injective. So the this map is injective. Um, that's equivalent to say that actually the 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 the, the F tilde is regular in this case. And in this case, in this case, you can um, F tilde restricted to the fiber over the point Z is the projective projectivizer. Mm -hmm. Divisor of the linear map. So you productivize the linear map F. So the computation of the degree of F tilde goes through the compactification, the, 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 through the, to the degree of this F term. So let's assume, so here's important lemma. Um, it's not so difficult to, to show, but I'm just gonna give you, Assume that uh, this map is injective. So this is an extra on in the normal bundle X over the point Z at each Z in Z. And that's gonna be very, very important. I will explain why. Has, you, have to, you have to guarantee this, this map is injective on, on every and every point of Z. Then, uh, the local the local degree of f along this component set equals uh, the degree on the exceptional devices of this at the level of special devices which are of the same dimension. Now are equivalent. Um, both are devices over the same dimension. <clears throat> so here is the warning. Why we need that warning? Um, if so, you need this this condition. If you have a point where it's not injective, that means that it's not regular. Mm -hmm. So if is not injective at Z, then you have, um, then the map is not regular it's because it was if on only if, if tilde is not regular in any, in any neighborhood, on a neighborhood, on a neighborhood of, 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 of the fiber, C tilde. So Z tilde is over Z, it's a point on the fiber. Mm -hmm. So what it happens that, uh, so it's not regular at this, in, this, in this point of the fiber over Z. So in order to define it, you have to blow up again over this point, yes? So you have to blow up, yeah? For some, in some smaller dimension there, you have blow up again, and if you blow up again, you get more components. Mm -hmm. So you have a subvariety. You have subvariety, um, another subvariety mapping to uh, to W tilde. Yeah. So in that case, so Z tilde is not the only. Uh, yeah, it's only one of several components of several components map into this. So, uh, so yeah, so what happens is that possible, so possible, that might happen, might not, but the possible, um, the degree of the F tilde, when you compute the degree, might be smaller of the actual degree you are, you are looking for. Also the degree on the fiber or in a neighborhood, neighborhood of the point set mm -hmm. the, around this file, which is that there was, it was the local degree of this component. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you are computing something, something smaller and you are missing some other components. 
So this is why this is why uh, uh, in in the computation one has to check uh, this condition that for every c z uh, this map f tilde z is actually injective. And the good that is very general. But the good news is that in our example uh, this is all computable and it's, it's going to be essentially as we mentioned last the other day in terms of multiplication of sections in terms of quadrics containing the the canonical uh, embedding and so on and so forth. It's very, very easy. Okay, hmm. let's me. Okay, let's let's start with the plain quintics. Mm -hmm. Quintics. Um, good. Uh, I didn't say what the theta characteristic is, right? <laughs> um, Well, I don't know if I need it, but let's 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 start with the curve in M6, the smooth curve, or plain quintic, plain, plain quintic, quintic. So you have a map into P2, given by a G25, yeah. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. So actually, this is given by a complete degree linear series to have um, L. Um, mm -hmm. So it's going to be an odd theta characteristic. Let's see. So there is a natural, a natural uh, line bundle theta characteristic. L given by the hyperplane class. So, uh, so it's essentially take the, um, I'll give a name. So the pullback of the hyperplane class. Phi pullback of OP2, one. Okay. So theta characteristic means that the you square the line bundle is can is isomorphic to the canonical bundle on C. So in particular has he, this this guy has degree five. Okay, so here's the picture. Usually I draw more pictures, but so you have the embedding and in the as a plane quick and yeah, and then plane quick ticket you you intersect with a line. The class of a line. Um, this is C. Yes. <clears throat> so you you let's let's give name to the. This is the Donagis notation uh, in Donagis Smith, but then in the other paper change of notation. But I will keep the notation of Donagis Smith just to. It's later you want to read that paper carefully. So um, yes, let's put it like this. C eta. All the double coverings um, in R6 such that C is a plane quintic. So maybe I'm, I'm going too fast, but this remember that this eta is, is the two torsion point associated to the double covering. Okay. Mm -hmm. This one is isomorphic. You see, you can you can give an isomorphism from from here into uh, um, you tensor by by L. So you have a naturally you have always since you have a plane quintic, you have associated this this L this degree five this theta characteristic, and you can tensor C a tensor with L. Mm -hmm. And now the difference is this this line bundle now lives in in peak five so in g minus one, so you can you can check the the parity of the of the space of sections. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So uh, essentially, what I'm saying here is that that's equivalent to 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 the pairs 
like this, such as C is plain quivic. So is the couple of a plain quivic plus a theta characteristic, plain quintic. And we say that, yeah, I see a zero of, you have two types of such theta characteristics is one if as this is this theta is we say that theta is odd. Well, the, then we said theta. Sorry, theta is odd. And with this congruent to zero, theta is even. But it depends on the choice of 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 the embedding of the plane quantity. Yeah. So then you can distinguish with it. That is the so-called uh, spin curves. Mm -hmm. But you have plus or minus. And this is another story. So this, this distinction between uh, between odd and even keeps you um, at the composition of this space. It has two, two connected components. The odd part. And I will use Q for, for, for what? For quintic, <laughs> Q for quintic, and with C, that's a sorry, this is notation for, from Donagi Smith, but it has a reason. So this is the even, and this is the odd. The even, well, as we, as we know, under, under the theta map, they want to map to Jacobians. And the others, we, I hope to see it later, maybe in the last lecture, they are going to cubic trifolds. So cubic trifolds, they are another nice example of, um, so the intermediate, I mean, I mean the intermediate Jacobian of a cubic, a cubic trifold defined as a, in terms of a Hodge theory, uh, gives you naturally a uh, principal polarized abelian variety of dimension five. This is another nice locus that I expect. I, I hope to say a couple of words about that. <clears throat> and one can compute also the degree there. Okay, so where am I? Uh, mm. So, so let me tell you some. Some, so it looks a little bit aside, but uh, um, we have the following result. Give me more for. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe it's not so relevant, but yeah. Uh, you have a, a double covering in R6, oh, in RQ prime. So uh, double cover and a quintic, such that the brim, um, so we say that the brim is in the, the brim, sorry, I'm changing notation all the time, but you take the brim of this double covering is in the Andriotti major loci, locus, N1, I will tell you what it is. If only if the associated eta is even. It's another way of characterizing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that means uh, uh, that means if your covering actually was in in the in the RQ without with that apostrophe, and what is N one? This is this is the Andro Andro Meyer. We say that a principal polarized abelian variety A theta lives in the NK. This is. Andreotti Mayer Losai. This Mayer is Mayer, I think so. Probably. <laughs> so, no. um, if the dimension of the singular locus, uh, so the singular locus of the theta divisor is at least K. Mm -hmm. So here's the issue. So in general, so you take a general, uh, a generic abelian, principal polarized abelian variety, the theta divisor has no singularities, okay? The general one. But if you are interested to understand the, the, the geometry of, of the modular space of AG, you start to look for a special low size inside there. And one natural way of 
distinguishing special law size is to look in the, at, the, at the places where the data divisor has singularity. And then you have all sorts of um, many law size. So the first case is when uh, the data divisor has at least one singularity. And it turns out that um, um, uh, the prims of quintics, uh, uh, they have all, um, yeah, actually the Jacobians, of them, they will have always a singularity. So where it comes from? Okay, so more, I'm gonna give you more precisely. So, uh, <clears throat> so if you have the Jacobian of X is the prim of this coupling, G5, okay? Um, with the X generic. So, okay, maybe here I need to say more precisely, this is non-hyperelliptic and non-trigonal. C is gonna be trigonal, but the, the starting X is not, okay? So <clears throat> uh, you can look at the singular locus of, 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 the, of the theta divisor, maybe, yeah. Sorry for the notation, but okay, singular locus. So uh, by the Riemann singularity theorem, the singular locus of the theta divisor can be identified with the line bundles of degree four on X, which have more sections as expected, namely at least two. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, <coughs> uh, this is Riemann singularity theorem, that the uh, well, that is one dimensional. It turns out it's actually it's a curve. Mm -hmm. this, this gives you a curve. So this is, and these curves come with a natural um, uh, involution, yota, which is to take L, K minus L. It's an involution. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be an involution of, of um, free uh, uh, without fixed points because, uh, well, because the curve is generic. So it has no vanishing theta nodes. But, okay, to have, <clears throat> mm -hmm. okay, now the genericity of X also tells you that, uh, to, for instance, the canonical map is an embedding, so it's not hyperlytic. Goes into P4. Okay, canonical embedding. Mm -hmm. And as you know, this is a classical algebraic geometry uh, for a generic uh, genus five curves. Uh, the can, in the canonical embedding, you can describe it as a complete intersection of three quadrics in general position, smooth quadrics. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and actually, any 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 G14 uh, on on X is cut out by one parameter family of planes. So there are planes swapping swapping out the curve, uh, swapping out a quadric. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have you have a family uh, a family of planes inside inside your quadric, and when you cut uh, you cut the, your 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 curve, it defines four points on the curve. This is a G one four, and all G forms come in, and the quadrics are actually singular quadrics, so they have uh, could be rank three or four, maybe four, of course. So quadrics, so the three-dimensional quadrics <coughs> containing X, yeah. containing X, okay? So you can always define, you can parameterize all the quadrics containing your curve, your canonical curve by a plane, let's call it P, generated by this Q1, Q0, Q2, smooth quadrics, so it's a P2. Mm -hmm. And, <coughs> Mm -hmm. And so P comes with a discriminant loci, locus. The discriminant locus of P is 
reference of P is, is the set of all the quadrics or all the points representing a quadric which is singular. And then different. So Q lambda such that Q lambda is singular. So, uh, so let me be more concrete. So every element here, um, right, you can describe it as I. So for instance, lambda zero to zero, just to make concrete. Q2. And the lambda zeros are parameters, this is lambda. The points on P2. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> mm -hmm. so this is the, the discriminant locus of, of, of this net of quadrics is, is a quintic. It's a quintic we're looking for. Quintic, because it's given by uh, the vanishing of the discriminant of all of, of these quadrics. So, yeah. the, the vanishing of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or the determinant where the entries are are the partial, the partial derivatives of this. So it's linear forms inside. Um, mm, so there are two planes. So for each for each lambda here. So let's call it that C. For each for each lambda in C. So we have a singular quadric. The singular quadrics. It comes with two, two, two families of planes. There are two, two planes of Q lambda, two families there, yeah. cutting the, the G14 or a G14. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this way you can construct uh, C tilde. To see, two to one, a double covering. So the C tilde parameterizes. So you can, yeah, you can associate it also to all the G one fours uh, coming coming from the singular quadric when you cut out the, the families of the singular quadric. So it has, yes, two. Let me put not two planes. There are two systems of planes, systems. Two. So there are two systems of two planes. <laughs> Two systems of two planes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So this is the construction. So uh, from the singular locus, you recover you recover the C tilde plus the data plus the data of of the G one four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, how much time do I have? Um, is there any question to here? It's a lot of- uh, You have uh, around 10 minutes. Okay, right. Okay, so I will say plain quintics. Um, plain moment. Okay, let's let's talk about the trigonal curves. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this, this is going to be trigonal, trigonal curves. So I will tell you the residual construction. Construction, mm -hmm. and it works in arbitrary G, yeah. Arbitrary G. G. So I start with a curve X of G minus one, such that it is X tetragonal. Okay, so it's going to be applied for uh, genus five uh, when X is of genus five, because all, all the all the genus, so the, the general X will have a tetragonal. We'll have, actually, we'll have a finite number of tetragonal. 
uh, maps, so G1 forks. So it's, it's the first case we can apply it in a, in a generic way. And to, to every X tetragonal curve, you can associate a double double covering. So let, let's say like this. It exists a double covering uh, such that the prime of this double covering is isomorphic to the to the Jacobian. And this is a this is a bijection. You can go and go up forward. Okay, so let me let me tell you what the C tilde. C tilde is is um, there's a subset of symmetric uh, so pairs of points, but on other points. That's why I put so on the symmetric product of X, such that uh, they are in a fiber. So P1. P2, P3, there exist other two points so, such that it is, this is in the G14. So what does mean the G14 is that you have P1 mm -hmm. and uh, that's right. So C tilde is going to be a map six to one to P1 because you have you have six ways of taking 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 pairs of points among four on other ones. And so it's taking so a little drawing. So you have four points. Yeah, P1, P2, P3, P4. And they're all mapped by the G14. This is a G14. So what you're choosing, you're just choosing pairs one, two, three, four of the diagonals. So, but it comes also with the natural involution, namely, the P1, P2 points, you map to the other two. So it comes with an involution that I think I call it sigma. It's not yet anymore. Sigma, natural involution. And the quotient, the quotient, uh, quotient of this, we call it C. So this is two to one. This is uh, without fi uh, fixed points. Sigma is free of fixed points. So it's a tal, and this is three to one. So you get naturally a trigonal curve C. And when you, <clears throat> and also the, uh, the branch locus of the tetragonal curve, the branch locus of the trigonal is the same. Yeah, this branch of the same in the same points on P1. So when you do the computations, you get that, okay, first, as I said, uh, this is trigonal. Um, this is a tal. This is, and H has, which is H, I call it H is, H is this. Mm -hmm. Same branch locus as, yes, I call it F. Same branch locus as F, which is equal to, <clears throat> Two G plus four, I think. In any case, when you make the computations, uh, the genus of C is one more than the genus of X. Mm -hmm. And this this tetragonal construction has an inverse construction. Yes. So now you consider a double covering C in the trigonal locus. So they are C T L C oops. in R6, such that C is trigonal. Mm -hmm. And how do you go? So uh, C is trigonal. So have um, now this is C who has a, a map three to one to P1. So I like to give this diagram. So you have a G13. So this G13, of course, is isomorphic to P1. And as a G13, you can embed it in the third symmetric product of C. Yes, you just take three points over one on the fiber. And the, the double covering pi here induces a double, no, it's not double, but you have induces a covering from C tilde to three, which degree, well, uh, for, for over each, uh, divisor of degree three here, you have to, for every point, you have two choices of, of the covering. So the, the degree is two 
to the three. So it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's of degree A to one, okay? And then you take uh, the restriction of this map to P1 and just call it um, X tilde, which is embedded here, it's just uh, P3 restricted to, this is the restriction to, to, to this to P1. <coughs> mm -hmm. And um, it comes also with an involution, sigma, which means because induced by the involution here. So C, C tilde has an involution, so you can, you can, you can exchange the points, so you will exchange the points over each, each point of the device. So that gives you also is um, uh, fixed point free, and you get a quotient x two to one. So it's two to one, and you started with the eight. So the, from here, here you get degree four. So you get an, a tetragonal curve um, x. Okay, so um, maybe I don't have, let's see, where am I? Uh, uh, my notes. Ah, here's my notes. Yes. Um, yes, maybe I, I should stop because there are now, now we are interested, what's, what's the question? So using this trigonal construction, I'm gonna show that there is only one, exactly only, it's not so difficult now, to show there's only one, only one double covering of a trigonal course and mapping to the Jacobi. Yeah? And at some point we need, we can study also the degenerations of the trigonal the construction. So which generations can happen? Um, for instance, what happened when, uh, well, in, in principle, the, 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 the tetragonal covering is, is generic. So it's simply ramified, but you can have points uh, where double ramified, triple ramified, and uh, the double coverings looks different. And in some cases, though, this double covering is gonna be in the boundary. It's gonna be disconnected and in some cases, you know, yeah. So one has to analyze, analyze all these cases. So what I'm gonna do tomorrow, and I think is, is, is for the theory is very important, is to give you a proof of the fact that I, I, I mentioned that the prime of this double covering uh, is isomorphic to the Jacobi. This is the proof uh, that I can give it. And it's a very nice argument by the generation actually. Yes. Do you have any questions? Uh, while we wait for questions, there is something I would like to say. Uh, for those who are still with us and who are not giving a talk, it would be, uh, since tomorrow we have a free morning, we should all be a bit uh, less tired. Uh, we, our aim is to meet at 1.30 on Gather, so that the, those who are not giving a talk can introduce themselves. There is a podium where you can speak to everybody and you just say your name, where you are, what you're working on, so that we have a little bit of the knowledge of each other we would have if we were at an in-person conference. Thank you. Angela, uh, please, uh, <laughs> I just had this announcement to make. Anyone has questions? I've had one one question. Uh, oh, the maybe, oh, yeah. So, but I think that you already somehow answered it because uh, you said that uh, in your uh, tetragonal construction, yes, that uh, trigonal construction, that the sigma is free of fixed points, yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that in order to 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 have this sigma free of fixed points, you have this tetragonal this G14 to be as general as possible, yes, because I can choose probably x. Uh, the, the G14 such that you have fixed points, yes? P1 plus P2 plus P1 plus P2 somehow. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Mm -hmm. But you, uh, 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 since you assume that X is generic in G, in A5, in J5, yes? In the Jacobian, mm -hmm. uh, in M5, oh, in M5, M5. You, will, you, will assume, you will get it somehow for free that the G14 is as general as possible, yes? Um, you can still have uh, funny cases where you have more ramifications, but um, yeah, you can still have them. Yes, uh, but uh, again, they are not going to be general inside of the of all G one fourth. 
and uh, and when you made the modeling count uh, and so in the end is we can just roll it out because they are going to map to something smaller but they, funny things can happen for instance you can get singularities on the CTO that's something that we don't like so much or yeah but we can talk tomorrow if you want more so can give you a, a larger picture of what happened on the it can happen yeah for for the uh, cannot have for the form to be if there is a sexual that's right yeah someone's the answer yes it's what i mean so if you, in the case for example you have a fiber two two p plus two q or do you still have those are precisely the cases where the the associated curve is singular yeah the curve singular so let's see how much singular and yeah mm -hmm. Yes, Angela, and I yeah. think also that there are some problems if the um, the foregonal series is not simple. So the, the 4 to 1 covers the uh, factorizes as uh, 2 to 1, 2 to 1. I think that the trigonal construction does not uh -huh. uh -huh. because um, uh -huh. There's also a comment in the chat. I don't know if you saw it. Is something is coming? No, no, this is worse. No, you mean something else. You mean, um, that's right. So, mm -hmm. but I think in that case, you will get something hyperliptic. Uh, no, I think you, they, they, will, they will have a, you factorize this uh, X to, to some double covering. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Well, uh, you will get some special curve in any way. <laughs> so you have the factorization. That means that x is, is is special in some way. I think that yeah. you go. Uh, you do, don't uh, get a curve. You get a root surface because there is also another approach. But maybe we can. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. So if I understood correctly, uh, if this you mean if this map. Four to one actually factorizes to something else. Yes. No, I don't know. X or Y. Yes, if yeah. it is factorized, yes, through a hyperelliptic curve that and that has to be hyperelliptic. And this is uh, well depends on the genus, but you call bielliptic? No, not bielliptic. Uh, but it will be a bielliptic if you get an elliptic one. Why hyperelliptic? Yes, it's called by hyperelliptic, right. You have a name for that. That's right. right. And, and so my understanding is if you can factorize, um, you have a special course in some sense. So it's not that general. You have an extra, yeah. Mm, you may have extra automorphism there. Yes. Yes. So um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's nice. OK, that is another way to consider the trigonal course. Uh, trigonal construction on this, you get something different. Yeah, yeah, true. Okay. Another comment. Another comment. The, if the tetragonal map factorizes, then it necessarily has two big or two in the fiber. Mm -hmm. Let me think. Yes, but then you needed the uh, true in every fiber. Yes, so this is again the again, again very to special question, and the, yeah. and and your answer is that you take the generic X and generic X is not of this no. form, so right. you have no, no yeah. problem with that. But you know, since you said that the trigonal construction works, uh, you know, more generally, uh, it's better yeah, yeah. to say no. that that then you have a problem of sometimes if if you have problems sometimes. Together, I think this. Yes, but I think it's still worth to look at the degeneration, maybe for other problems, for other things. But it's still worth to look at the degeneration of the construction. For the degree, well, it's not going to be important, but uh, you get the interesting things, uh, for instance, when you allow uh, ramification on points. And uh, yeah, you can you can play with that. Yes, but depends depends what you are looking for. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't dismiss the, the specific cases. <laughs> it's going to be very important. Yes. OK, uh, no more questions? OK, so I think uh, we 
continue tomorrow and uh, the plan is to finish the computation with more more geometrical um, arguments i already give you the answer and then uh, i will talk a little bit uh, about the other special side cubic trifles and um, yeah and then why you have this 27 more yeah let's, let's discuss about this 27 more precisely okay thank you thank you Thank you very much and uh, see you all in gather very soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.